Ariel Hawani in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, alongside Uriah Faber, who meets Henan Barrow this Saturday night live on pay-per-view for the UFC interim bantamweight title. And Uriah, it's good to see you again with a shirt this time. I think that is a little more apropos, a little more comfortable for me at least. Yeah, I know how you feel about guys with their yeah. shirts off. Just <laughs> what is that supposed to mean? Get you little, yeah, a little get weird. your juices going. Yeah. yeah, I don't need TRT. I just need that. <laughs> That's right. And we also learned today that Ariel's a germaphobe, which is pretty impressive. Everyone was required to take off their shoes, and Ariel refused to take his shoes Not off. Not true. And so germaphobe. Not you germaphobe. Want to shake hands. I would love. I, I'll yeah. hug you. Well, you 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 Go just pulled out. All right. Let's keep it professional here. All right. <laughs> You're, you're headlining a pay-per-view. This is a big deal. Yeah. You know, there have only been two bantamweight title fights headlining a pay-per-view. You were involved in both of them, obviously, the one coming up on Saturday, uh, the one at UFC 132, I believe it was, last July against Dominic Cruz. Why? And, and you know, a lot of people say your eye favor gets too many title shots. Your eye favor is, is loved by the UFC. Why do people love you so much? Why do you get so many shots to headline pay-per-views and no one else can? Um, I think my record speaks for itself. I'm 25 and five over nine years uh, with a high percentage of finishes. And um, I have fights to get into these title shots and I win. So um, this is my what, fifth fight at 135 pounds and I'm three and one and I thought I won the one against Cruz. So if I would have won that, I would have been four and oh at 135. So I'm, I'm right there with the top guys and uh, going to be the top guy tomorrow. You mean on Saturday? On Saturday. Right. Whenever we fight. Right. Uh, that being said, is this do or die for you in terms of title shots? Do you think that this is your last chance to get a title shot if, if you don't win on Saturday night? No, I don't think so. I mean, unless there's a bunch of guys out there who can beat me. Right. That's yet to be seen, and um, I'll keep fighting to figure out whether that's going to happen or not. I must tip my cap to you. Very refreshing to hear you say that uh, if you win on Saturday, you're not going to wait for Dominic. While Hennon, are you surprised, Hennon? You, he's not the, the rival. He says he wants to wait for him. It doesn't really make a lot of sense. I would have expected you to say you want to wait for Dominic. That's the big money fight, but you're saying I'm not putting my life on hold. Why? Uh, just that's not how I live, man. I'm not going to put my life on hold for a cruise. You know, I, I'll, I'll hopefully get to fight him next. Hopefully he heals up and everything goes, goes good and we get to fight next, but I'm not going to sit and wait around for that guy to heal up his little injuries and, and whatnot. And, uh, you know, I'll fight anybody. That's why I'm where I'm at today. That's a pretty severe injury. Little, it's not quite little. Or his, I'm not going to wait around for him, or his little or his severe injuries, <laughs> or severe problems, whatever it may be that's holding him back. There are some people in the past we've seen guys win the interim belt. GSP comes to mind. They win the belt. They don't want to put it around their waist. They don't consider that the real belt. What are your thoughts on the interim belt? It'll go with the rest of my belts, and I'm not exactly sure where they're at. They're either at the claw in my closet or uh, in my safe. I'm not real sure. I'm about fighting, fighting to see who's the best. So that's what this is about. And, and it's going to be a lot to me to have that title, but I, I don't wear it around. Like Tim Sylvia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he wears it to the grocery to store. The club and the, the, club the bed. Wherever else he right, needed yeah. to. <laughs> And, and I'm just curious. I mean, you know, you, you think about this fight. You think about what he what he has done. Hennon, I know you said that he's not on your level. He hasn't fought the kind of guys that you fought. You still have to be impressed. Like, for someone to go 29 fights in a row without without a defeat, that's still impressive, right? Yeah, I never said that he wasn't on my level. We're he hasn't fought him. anyone quite like you, you said. Yeah, he hasn't fought anyone quite like me. Uh, he's definitely on my level. He's fighting for a world championship. He's got a, a huge win streak. I think he's mentally strong, but he's not better than I am. I think he's been better than everyone else he's fought. When you look at his tape, though, because he hasn't lost in so many years, how do you break him down? Like, where do you see the holes in his game? Um, you know, you just basically look at the guy as a human being and know that he's been rocked by punches. He's been taken down. He's gotten tired in the later rounds. You know, he's human just like the rest of us. And, um, and I'm very good, and he's very good, and I feel like I'm better. You caused a bit of a firestorm a few weeks ago when maybe it was taken out of context. Some people thought that you were not happy to be fighting on this card. The Canadian fans are very sensitive. <laughs> I know this being a Canadian myself. They thought you were very unhappy about being here. Clear this up. Were you unhappy that you removed from, from the, the previous fight card, 148, to this card here in Canada? The moving of the card has nothing to do with Canada, why I was unhappy. I, I've been promoting the same date for a long time and had a lot of different changes in this thing, so I wasn't exactly happy to have another change happen, but um, Canada's fine in my book. I, I, I like it here. It's actually 
about 72 and sunny outside and um it's a beautiful day and and the people are cool will rosie be at the fight i don't think she's making this one she'll be there some kind of super fan <laughs> she'll be cheering me on all right one last thing uh, i see you rocking the torque here that's your new brand all of a sudden it seems like every week you come out with a new brand i open up a magazine there you are with with a new brand of yours where did this come from how 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 old is this brand this brand has been in the works i've been talking with uh the guy who's partnered up with me scott james this is his kind of baby that that i i got on board with and i'm really happy with and uh scott james actually started bsn the supplement company and sold it and was dying to get into this space and and really liked me as an individual and and we hit it off so we've been working for a long time on developing this thing and it's going to be a little bit different we're doing equipment we've got take-home mats and and all sorts of cool stuff that that is going to be going into this this new brand so i'm excited for it now you did have a new brand just recently called form athletics which then was sold to k-swiss and now it appears is no longer around what's the real story there what happened to form athletics the the story with form is basically i started that with a with a partner named mark miller and we sold it like shortly after a couple of years ago to k-swiss and uh you know part of the deal was uh a three-year payout and <clears throat> The guys at, at K-Swiss had like a really rough year and the stock went down a bunch in K-Swiss and they kind of closed up shop on a bunch of little projects, including Form, which they used kind of as a tax write-off. So it was unfortunate to me because I love the brand so much and we had a huge team along with it. You know, Johnny Bones Jones and Anthony Pettis and Chad Mendez and, and Joseph Benavides. And it was, it was sad to see it go, but, you know, it was out of my hands. So why not just... You know, resurrect that brand. Because I don't own it. Oh, you couldn't take it back? <laughs> no, I tried. Yeah. yeah, I tried to take it back. I tried to uh, work a deal, and who knows what their plans are with that thing. Maybe it will pop back up. And um, I mean, they still own the brand. It wasn't like uh, I had any control at that point. So if I could get it back, I would have. But this brand's going to be awesome. Torque is, is a really cool brand. It's going to have a lot of cool stuff. I'm, I'm trying to fill in these these absences of fighters with their injuries come out with some new inventive stuff to help keep us safe and uh, i got some cool ideas well that's very apropos considering all the injuries on this card ufc 149 we look that's forward the to it second time you use that word apropos yeah well you is know that it's, a new word is that well, the new word today when did new i say word from ariel hawani apropos do you know what it means i do not like appropriate it's french oh, i'll like, teach you one day like one of those things like uh you know, one of the little short things they use on Jersey Shore, is that what you're trying to come out no, with? No, not even close. This is a sophisticated like, term. This is French. Well, We're I, in Canada here, you know. What are all some other ones? Oh, like, like GTL. Like GTL yeah, and LL. Not even close. Like that? No, this is a real word. Oh. This is not like an acronym. Well, you know what that means? Acronym? I know an acronym. I don't want to make you... I know you fighters. You guys just stick yeah. to the uh, the fighting. All right. Well, good luck to you, Ryan. Always a pleasure. Get some germs on you. Okay. Let's go. Ha! <laughs> right. Keeping them out. <laughs> Thanks, Ryan. <laughs> Oh, well, here I am. <laughs> there you are. <laughs>